In this lesson, we're going to talk about just the next tool, which is the marking tool. It's right under the move tool. So up next here, if we click right click on here, we'll see there's a rectangular marking tool and an elliptic marking tool. Remember, if we go back to edit, toolbar, there are a few more, single row and single column. But these I have never worked with. That's why they are not in my toolbox here, in my toolbar. Anyways, let's get back to this. I'm gonna select the rectangular marking tool. And now, first of all, going to create a selection. But before I do that on my main image, I always create a new layer here. So in case I mess up, I can just delete this and start again. So let's also click here into the image. I'm going to drag and click. And while I'm clicking and dragging, you can see that this goes into any side. If I hold shift, it's equally expanding. So there's already one shortcut, equally expanding if you hold shift. Now let's create a big selection. Right, so we've created a selection now. And now you can work on with that selection. You can either fill it, you can refine it, you can do whatever you want to and create blocks out of it. At the top of this marking tool, you can also see here are a few more options in the menu or in the option bar. Again, if we go to the top here, first of all, it's just the normal selection, so new selection. Then again, add to selection. Then again, subtract from selection. Or again, intersect. So let me show that quickly. Here's add to. Let's actually go to subtract from selection. So now you can see also a little arrow here or a little cross has a minus. This means if I drag another selection over this, it will cut out that little piece from the selection. So, so maybe for instance, we want to cut out here the glasses. Then we have also cutting that out. And then you can also go on with intersect and create something very weird and just have a very weird selection out of this. I don't tend to work so much with this. Over here is also a feathering mode, which will feather the edges, so either you have hard edges like we have now with zero feathering, or you can feather them. I'll show that in a little bit. Then also over here under style, we have normal, which we are currently working with, but we can also choose fixed ratio or fixed size. This means if you go to fixed ratio, you can now with width and height, enter a certain number, hit enter, and right away you have exactly that size for your selection. I normally work with normal. Great, so what I'll do now is just go back to the marking tool, to the normal option, and inside of the selection, I'll hit right click and now a whole drop down menu appears. So now again, a new Photoshop trick. You can either work with keyboard shortcuts or again in here, hit right click and have a few more options with working with selections. So meaning you can now deselect, you can select inverse, you can feather again, you can refine the edge, you can save selections, you can make work paths out of these. You can layer via copy, layer via cut, new layer, all of this. I don't work so much with these three options. More with free transform, transform selection, fill stroke, and again, gauge and blur. These are all extras, not so important right now. For you, maybe it's fill, deselect, select inverse, feather, save selections, and make work path. Let's, for instance, now go to fill, and we want to fill this up now with a color. So over here in the contents, we have also another drop down menu. We can select color and this time the color picker will come up. We're going to select the red color here, say OK. For blending options, we want to stick with normal and 100% opacity. Hit OK and right away on top of this new layer, we have a new selection here. Now I want to get out of this selection. So simply hit Command D and for Windows users, Control D. So this was the keyboard shortcut again, but you can also hit right click inside of the selection and just go over to deselect. But working with keyboard is just quicker again. So right away you guys can see that this edge is very hard. So that's what you're up to, then this is perfect. But if you want to feather this a little bit, you should use a different technique. Let's delete this layer and create a new layer again. I'll take back, go back here to the rectangular marking tool. I'll make a big selection and I'm ready to quick again. Command D, we have to remove again. We have to first in the top bar here, add 100 or 50 for feathering mode. Now Photoshop knows we want to feather our selection. So let's create a big new selection here and drop it and right away you can see it's rounded off. So this means it's now feathered. I can now again hit right click inside of the selection, say under here fill, fill it up again with color, press Command D to get out of the selection or right click deselect and right away you guys can see that we have now a very soft feathered edge. So again with the selection tool you can create a few different techniques with feathering. Let's delete this once again, open again a new layer, take again the rectangular marking tool and just create a big another rectangular here. Okay it's still feathered. 
Let's go a step back. First zero, feathering, and create a new selection. Great. So we have a selection now here, and I want to once again click right click. And again, to get into uh, options here. So first of all, now we've selected just this area. But what if we wanted to select the outside? Then we can easily hit right click in here and say select inverse. Now this area is not selected, but everything else is selected. So you can easily work now only in this area. You can also use this again on masks, on some brushes, again with layers. So wherever you need a certain selection, you can try and work here also with the marking tool. Now let's also go a step back so we only have the inside selected. I'm going to hit right click again. Feathering, I showed you that before. Refine Edge comes later in the advanced stages of Photoshop. For a beginner, not so important right now. Save Selections and Make Work Path. Let's head over to Save Selection. So say for instance, I'm just going to go out of the selection with Command D. Say for instance you have created two round selections here. Elliptical Marking Tool and you have now created some perfect cutouts of the glasses here and you want to save those for the future state so that you don't need to go back in and create again selections and spend time creating them carefully. So you can now simply inside of the selection hit right click, go to save selection, a new window will pop up, it will ask under which document, yes under this document please, channel, you can stick with new and now you can type in here glasses. Once you are good on the new channel, just hit OK. It will be saved directly. So now I can continue with my Photoshop process. I maybe get out of the selection. I continue with a few adjustment layers and do a few other things. And then later, I may be needed for a mask. Then it's very easy. You can just simply go back to the selection and inside of the canvas here, hit right click and find the option of load selection. Select the load selection, go all the way down again to the channels and find glasses over here. Select glasses, OK, and that was my previous version. Let's do that again. Load selection and also glasses here. OK, and right away you have your selections back again. Obviously these were just quick selections. So normally when you have refined selections or you cut out a person or you try to be more precise with Photoshop, again with selections, this is a great way how to save and load selections. Let's also back, head back here, right click again and say make a work path. Later when we're working with paths and also masks with pen tool, you might need a work path. So over here is an option how to work or make a work path out of this. Tolerance for now, 2.0 is okay. I'm gonna hit okay and right away you'll see here are paths. Once we get to the pen tool stage, this might be a bit easier for you to fall back onto this video and understand what I did here. Okay, zooming out a little bit again and then literally select the pen tool and escape out of this path. But more about that in the pen tool. Okay, let's go back to the marking tool, create one more selection over here, hit right click, and now again, free transform or transform selection. That's what I still want to mention. Let's actually make this a bit better. I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer, take the rectangular or actually the elliptical marking tool, make a selection around here, move the selection again, and hit right click inside of the selection and go to transform selection. So now right away you see we have some anchor points around here and you can now transform the selection until it fits perfectly onto the black glasses here. You can also hold command on the keyboard and select an anchor point. This will now bring you into a different tool but doesn't really matter, you can now move the anchor points. And now you can move the selection a little bit until it fits here to the glasses. You can spend hours doing it like this when you're not familiar with the lasso tool or again when not familiar with how to work with the pen tool. So again, that's a good state for a beginner, moving the selections like so, accept it, and right now you have a perfect selection around here. Again, now right click, and you can put this right away to save selections. So whenever you keep on Photoshopping, you can work further with this. Now remember again, you can also use the selections on masks and on different effects, or even if you have a brush right now selected, say with a red foreground color on a new layer, you can easily brush around in your paint. All right, let's go step back. You can easily brush around in your canvas. Wherever you're brushing, nothing is happening. It will only be visible here in your selection. So whatever you're doing to Photoshop right now, to this layer, it will only be visible inside of the selection. Unless, again, you have the outside selected with Select Inverse. So now when you're pressing B for the brush, and you're brushing, you will brush over everything. 
just not the round selection here in the center. So again, these are a quick introduction into selections. You will use them most probably quite a lot in your Photoshop career. So have a look also, again, in every tutorial, I mostly use selections. Okay, so let's head over now to the next tool, which is the Lasso tool.